Okay, so last time I did something with three vectors. This time I want to do something with three vectors as well. Uh, I want to do sort of the same kind of problem, um, but only this time I want with these these three vectors to be um, I want them to be quantitative. Right. So last time I did a lot of qualitative work with my three vectors. Uh, I just had some drawings and I thought about them a little bit, like you were going to think about them a little bit. And I was able to get a relationship from that. And um, that's something that should be well within your uh, well within your capabilities. I mean, it's fairly simple. It's fairly straightforward. Uh, this time I want to get the same sort of relationship, right? I want to find C in terms of A and B. Um, and I want to find that relationship uh, mathematically uh, now that I have these um, components and things defined. So I'm going to just use some sort of mathematical wizardry to do it brute force. Um, and there's nothing wrong with brute force from time to time as long as you know it actually works. Uh, brute force doesn't. Uh, brute force should always work. It's just that um, sometimes you're just not quite the brute that you thought you were. Um, so we've got a y direction, we've got an x direction, we've got a little bit down here that we're not going to use. Okay, so let's see what these things look like if we actually plot them. Okay, so we've got um, one, two, three. What? One, two, three. So our highest one is here at uh, minus three meters to the left and um, three meters up which is here. So this is the one we want to find in terms of the other ones, right, called C. Uh, the other two, um, well, we've got one, two, three, four that way and one up. So four, four meters um, to the right and one up. That is what we're calling B and A we're calling three and one, two up right and those are the things that we want to find we want to use these two to to um, describe the length of c or to describe the entire vector c should not be hard should be easy it's exactly the sort of thing that we're really into because that's you know just the way we roll um ah, well that's just a horrible thing it's we shouldn't be saying things like that anymore um, so the way I like to approach these problems is to write them in general form. So, you know, there's just a general form of saying this, right? And um, that general form is C is equal to a constant times A, a scalar constant times A, plus a scalar constant times B. I like to be creative, so I've used alpha and I've matched that up with A and beta with um, B. Who would have thought of that? Right? Who would have thought of that? Um, two, um, now that I've got that general form, now I can start doing uh, mathematics the way you love to do mathematics, which is plugging numbers in. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to break it down into components, right? So um, the reason why I can do that is because these components are um, supposed to be linearly independent. Um, so that I'm able to um, muck around with one component without affecting the other component too much. Although they are going to be um, connected through these scaling constants, uh, we'll get that later on. So our x direction is minus 3 meters is equal to um, 3 meters times alpha plus 4 meters times beta. We get something similar for the y component. Three meters is equal to um, two meters times alpha plus one meter times beta. Simple, straightforward. We're not we're, we're not doing anything um, complicated yet. Um, now we've got two equations and two unknowns. All sorts of ways we can do that, right? We could um, can't find a way to cancel out beta completely, um, or we can find a relationship from alpha to beta. I'm going to do, I usually like to do that first one, this time I'm going to do the second one because it's actually pretty uh, pretty nice this way and there's something cool I can talk about uh, when I do that. Um, so um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add 
add the functions. I'm just going to add them straight up, right? Each each um, side gets added up independently. So minus three meters plus three meters by itself is zero, and that's the whole reason. That's the reason why I can do this. Um, here, alpha. Alpha gets added up independently of beta because that's what happens when you multiply by something. So we have 5 meters times alpha um, plus 5 meters times beta. Oh, exactly the same. What, what does that mean? Well, what that means is that beta is equal to minus alpha. Right. So we have the alpha beta thing, and it's actually some sort of um, line like that. Um, fairly suggestive, actually. Um, now what I'll do is I'll substitute, substitute, I've got too many I's in my substitute, substitute, me for him, um, I'll do that back, I'll substitute back into, um, an equation. So either one of those equations will do, which one do you prefer, prefer the Y? Okay, we'll do the y then. Um, so now I have 3 meters is equal to 2 meters times alpha plus 1 meter times um, beta, which is minus alpha, uh, which is equal to, it turns out, um, alpha. And these um, m's cancel, the meters all cancel, so I have alpha is equal to um, 3. And turns out that because of that, I have beta is equal to minus 3. How about that? Um, so that means I can put all these together so I can substitute back into the general form now. Okay, let's... So let you see that. Okay, so that means I take C is equal to this alpha times A, so that's 3 times alpha, 3 times A, um, plus this uh, minus 3 times beta, so we put minus 3 times beta, and that's equal to 3 times alpha mi A minus B, which is exactly what we had last time. Isn't that astounding? I somehow ended up with the answer that I had in the previous one. Um, who knows why? Apparently, this vector is just uh, this vector, right? Isn't that great? That's just great. It's it's lovely. Um, I wish everything worked out that way. So since everything's working out so well, I think it's about time for a little bourbon, and I will. Um, talk to you at some point in the future. Bye now.